Yeah, because this one. Yes, it's time to go on. Whoop. <laughs> Patty's clock. I'm like real proud of it. It it is actually working. So is it, it is. Is it accurate? I think it is. Well, okay, let's see. Three twelve. Yes, it's keeping good time. And we got it at like. I forget Michael's or Hobby Lobby, something like that. That looks so good. We're gonna have to hang that in here so people see it. Okay. It'd be good to have a clock in here. Yeah. Cause look right above the uh, that thing over there, right above there, we could have the clock. Perfect. I love it. This is Patty. She's amazing. All right, we're live. All right. Welcome, everyone, to our Friday IQ Designer lesson. I'm holding the clock that Patty taught us how to make a few weeks ago. And I'm, like, really impressed because I think we got the uh, clock mechanism at, like, Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that. And it's actually keeping accurate time. I never thought we were going to act accurate time but I love looking at this this she did like this double fancy fill in this so you're gonna have to go back and watch that video of Patty demonstrating how to make the clock because uh, you'll see a lot of people on our Facebook group page uh, posting pictures of the clock so I absolutely love it I love the font she chose everything okay but today I wanted to show you an easy way to make to put borders around your embroideries like they did here um, I guess I can put this down on the table right mm -hmm. so like they did uh, so you know we went to in the sewing machine mode and regular sewing mode and we added the borders well we don't have to do it that way we can do it in IQ designer and that's what I want to show you how to do today so that it'll make put making all of your pillows and your mini quilts uh, for Wander Lane projects so much easier all right so I'm gonna head over to the machine Okay, I got my fabric, and I hope I cut this apart. I think I did, yes, okay. So I, I'm pretty sure I'm ready. Ready? <laughs> That's good, yes. Yes, we so we had a fun night last night. Thank you all for placing so many orders. I mean, we really, really, really appreciate that. So, mm -hmm. all right, okay, so, okay, so I do have my notes. Now, hopefully, you know, I always do these really quick, and it's always right after, you know, we've done our show the night before, so both PJ and I are tired, uh, so hopefully I didn't make any mistakes, but we'll let them screenshot it, right, PJ? So they can follow along with it, and then uh, as I go along, if I find any mistakes, it's also I'll... on the website right now. Oh, it is on the website. You put it on the website. Yeah. Wow, that's great. It's, so um, it's under info and then free instructions. Okay, info and free instructions, mm -hmm. and um, on the website. Gloria that's Holland. wonderful. <laughs> oh my goodness, are we getting it together, or, or aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. I can't, I can't believe how good everything is going, and it's all because of all of you. So thank you all so, so much. You know, it's just, it definitely is a dream come true. So uh, we really appreciate it. We you know, have so many people to thank for it. Even our, our moderators of our Facebook page, they put so much time in. PJ, remind me, I gotta send them all a present. I haven't done okay. that in a while. Yeah. I gotta think of something really good and get all their names and addresses and send them a present. Right, everybody? I owe them a present. They've really done a lot of work. So, um, okay, so I guess because the instructions are there, do, do see if they um, want us to send, do the screenshot. Well, I'll send, I'll send them to the Facebook group. Yeah, okay. Um, so I think they're all right. How many pages is it? Oh, yeah, oh, it oh be maybe too many. Too many. <laughs> to, to do I do shot. always set it. Oh, it's a, it's only three that we I printed okay, it out we, twice. We could do that if I see. The yeah, people it's are just three. It. So we could do that. So should I? I'll put it right here. Well, is that I'll, would that well, be good? Or you know, or 
just I think hold. let's do it at the end. Oh, the, at the end. Okay. Yeah, let's do it at the end. Okay, just in case there's corrections, because I could uh -huh. write it right beside it. Yeah. Okay, so let me make sure I have a good pen, because I think all I have are markers. So I'm going to get a pen here. Okay, now we're good. Okay. We'll do this. Okay. We'll do this. I think we'll do this screenshot at, at the end. Okay. Right. Yeah, just in case there's um, mistakes and I need to correct it. Mm. So, okay. All right. So this is the design that I sewed out. Okay, and it it wasn't the design that was in the Wanderlane Bunny No Book. It is in the the book, but this is big so the one in the book is just six inch by six inch and this one was about I'm thinking it was about nine inch by nine inch so so the instructions for turning this into a mini quilt or a pillow are not correct uh, so today we are going to put borders on in IQ designer so we're gonna put on a first the first piece that's going to look like uh, a flange and then the second piece we're going to put it in and it's going to be bordered with bunny tails so to go along with our bunny knoll theme so okay so I do have a full bobbin in my machine um, we have a brand new needle in there I'm going to slide this in so okay so and here I am at my main screen. Could okay, you, we're could good. You park yourself in front of. The, in front, yeah. right here. Mm -hmm, if that's okay. And will that block, or am I that reflecting? It actually helps a little. It bit. does help. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that's good. I could. I'd love to be in front. I'm, I. I feel so unnatural. I'm so used to being off to the side because I'm always demonstrating the machine <laughs> instead of getting to sew. So this feels really weird to be right in front of the machine. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is um, we are going to uh, go to IQ Designer. So IQ Designer. Now go up to the leaf, the leaf with the arrow pointing out up at the top. Image scan and then scan. So I put my design. I didn't record how big it was or anything. I put my my hoop in the machine and I want to scan what's inside my hoop. So I'll press scan and it's going to tell me uh, that it's going to move. So I'm going to say OK. So and it's going to pass by. I think it takes three passes to take the picture. So there's the first one. And I don't have to worry about hitting the wall with this hoop because it's I'm using the 10 and 5 ace by 10 and 5 ace hoop. So if you're on your the Destiny Malta, Altair or Meridian, you'll use your nine and a half by nine and a half hoop for this one. And the, the directions for this are on GloriaHorn.com under the info tab. Okay, and where is that info tab at the on, top? At the top. At of the, the top. Screen. The info tab. Info tab, and then free instructions. Free instructions. That's wonderful. So wonderful. Okay, now look. I can hardly see here. I can't see my image. So I'm just going to click up here, and uh, so so it shows a leaf with a dark background. So I'm going to click on that and just darken my background so I can see it good. Uh, one thing I learned though, if I make this too dark, I'm not going to see my square. So you'll see that when it happens happens. So I did go up to to darken my image so I could see better. Now, could you do something for me? Could you lower the, your paper in your hand? Yeah. Just like, just like it's that. reflecting. That's, that's a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll do whatever you want me to do. <laughs> okay. So first I'm going to go to shapes. So shapes is this button next to the eraser and it's a circle and a square. So shapes and then we are going to select 01 the square then OK. Size. I need to size it so it's just beyond my design. So I'm going to go up to the four arrows pointing out because I just I just want to play with it. I want to watch it go, and once I like what I see, now I it feels like this design is actually not a square. It is a rectangle, but just a slight rectangle. So I'm looking at it here, and I've got oh you know I've got 
even amount of space here and here, but then look at it, it's too close to the bunny ears and too close to the Y. So let's say, maybe I'll just go a little bit bigger. Okay. And then I am going to make it just a little taller. So I'm going to go to this button with the arrow pointing up and down, and I'm going to stretch it just a little bit bigger. Okay. So I'm looking at the distance from the ear to the red square and from the Y and then here and here. And as soon as you like what you see, write those numbers down. Okay, so I am going to go with 9.36 tall by 9.32 wide. Okay, now I'm going to go to say OK. Oh, see, that's one thing I did not put in, so I should have gone uh, 9.36 uh, 9 by 9.32 and then OK. All right, that's kind of self-explanatory. There, OK. Now, line properties. <laughs> there, I dropped my pen. Thank you. OK, line properties, straight stitch. So what do I need to do? I want to do a flange with this blue fabric and I just want it like sticking out just like about a half inch and then I want to I I want to put make my border with this peach fabric okay originally I was going to do white around it cuz I decided I wanted white bunny tails but the white bunny tails won't show up on the white fabric. So I decided I am going to do white bunny tails or candle wicking um, on the peach fabric. So then I'll be able to see the bunny tails better. Okay, so, all right. So the first thing I need to do is lay down the blue fabric and just do a straight stitch square. Then I need to trim around it then sew that down with a satin stitch. Then I need to make my next piece of fabric, the opening, one inch bigger, which will make the flange around it all a half inch wide. You could do it whatever size you want. If you only want a quarter inch or if you want wider, whatever you want to do. So you'll see what it's going to end up like and then you decide. But I'm going to make my outer square one inch bigger and then first I need to tack down my fabric and then trim away the fabric inside. Then I need to do the candle wicking bunny tails all around. Okay, to kind of applique it in place. Okay, so I went to line properties, then straight stitch. Okay, wait, hold on, let's see, line properties and then straight stitch? Yes, okay. yes, which now on my paper, I'm on um, step 13. 13. So, Line properties, straight stitch, red, okay. And I just select a color that I'm going to be able to see the change. So right now that line is black. If I lighten my picture, you can see the line better. If I darken my, my picture, you can't see the line at all. So one time I did that and I was like, where is it? I have no idea. But it was because I had my picture, my background picture too dark. Okay, all right, so I, I chose straight stitch, red, okay. Now line bucket, click on the line to turn it red. So you're telling the machine you want it to sew out this square as a straight stitch. Now I need to save this. I need to come back and get it. So when I form my satin stitch, it's the exact same size. So memory, save on the machine, and we're going to be later looking for a red square. So that's going to be the red square. So click on next. And the next thing we're going to do is tell it. It gives you the chance to tell it how long you want the straight stitch. Well, I'm just using it as a tack down. And so I'm not really worried about the stitch length. So I'm just going to leave it there and press set. OK. And this, I. I always tell you every time I wish this said you're going beyond being able to save 
did you save your design? So don't even read what it says. Just that, this screen is to remind you, did I save it? And yes, I did. I saved it. So I'm okay. So I'm going to press okay. Okay, so there's my straight stitch. I'm actually in embroidery right now. So I need to add the satin stitch. So add IQ Designer. Now, see, when I was first doing this, it made more sense to put everything on that main screen, but then your machine decides what order to sew it in. So you can't put everything in at once. You have to tell it what I wanted to sew first, what I wanted to sew second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever you're doing. And so there I've got the first step where I'm tacking down the blue fabric. Okay, now I'm going to add the satin stitch. So I went add IQ designer, pocket with the arrow pointing out, not the leaf, but the arrow pointing out up above. So the pocket, and there is my red square. So the red square Okay. Oh, there's another time I didn't put okay. So at step 24, I'm going to write in okay. And then okay. There it is. So now I need to tell the machine how I want it to sew out. So line properties. This time I want the zigzag. It's already selected. You could select it again. That's okay. Green. And a bright green is the best to select. You'll see the, the change better. Then OK, line bucket, and now I'm going to step 30, click on the line to turn it green. So there you have told the machine that you wanted to sew a zigzag, all right. Now click on next. Okay, now it's going to ask you how wide you want it, but it's in inches. And I'm more comfortable with the width of the stitch in metric. So I want you to go up to settings up at the top. There's a, it looks like a piece of paper. It's right in between the camera and the question mark. So the settings, page 9 of 12. And right there it says inches at the top. Click on that and change it to millimeters then OK. So now I, the two millimeters is too narrow. So I decided I'm going to do mine in 3.5. Um, the minimum I would do a satin stitch is three. And like I usually do a four, but I kind of don't want the satin stitch to uh, let's say scream at me. I don't, I want to see the fabric. So I decided to make it 3.5 wide, but you can make it whatever you, with you want. We're going to see the machine sew. And if you say, oh, I would have rather had that narrower or wider, this is where you'll make that change. But then, okay. And I really like the density on my satin stitch to be really nice and tight. So this 100%, click on that and plus up to 110 and OK. So now I've, I've got a nice tight satin stitch and then press set and then OK. Did, did we save this? Well, we already have the red square saved, so we're fine. We don't need to save it again. So OK. Now, so I can see right here, I have my tack down. I'm going to pull my hoop out and trim away the inside. Then I'm going to put my hoop back in and I am going to um, do the satin stitch. So what do I do, need to do now? I need to tack down my peach fabric and I'm using, um, I, both fabrics I'm using today are Wander Lane. Uh, I'm not using any Whisper Weave. Because uh, I really like the I really like the fabrics that I chose. So and there's whisper weave in the background of this embroidery design. So you know I just decided I didn't want to whisper weave next to a whisper weave. So but anyhow, okay. So we are going to add the peach fabric and then the bunny tails. Okay, so add IQ designer. Pocket with the arrow pointing out and the red square. Okay. Now, 
we need to change the size. So click on size and oh, it's in millimeters. I need to go to the settings again and put it in inches. Okay, so I'm going to go settings up above page 9 of 12. Click on millimeters, change it to inches, and then OK. So I have that on step 45. Make this square one inch bigger. So now I, when I did it earlier, I had different dimensions. So I have right now it's 9, so I want to make that 10.37, and then it is at 9.33. And so I want to make that 10.33, and that will give me a half inch flange all around. So I'm going to go up to size. I'm going to use the keyboard. You can use your arrows, but if you have a Solaris Vision, it's just easier to select the keyboard and then uh, tap in those numbers. So I'm going to go 10.37 and set. Okay, when you're new at this, you're, you want to press OK, but no, press set. And then my other dimension should be 10.33. So 10.33 and set. Then OK. So the first thing I need to do is tack down the peach fabric. So I'm going to go to up to line properties. So it's the piece of paper up above. So piece of paper, then straight stitch, blue, make like a bright blue, then OK. If I pick a navy blue, it's going to look black. So stay with the brighter colors. Then line bucket. So you can see I have my blue and I have my straight stitch now. So line bucket and click on the line to turn it blue. Now I made this square bigger, so I want to I want to save this. I'm going to need it again when I go to put the candle wicking in. So memory, save on the machine, and we're going to look for later. We're going to look for the blue square. So next, stitch length doesn't matter because it's just a tack down. So set and OK because we already saved it, so we don't have to save it. Okay, so it's looking good. Then, okay, now I need to add the candle wicking. So add IQ Designer, pocket with the arrow pointing out up above, the blue square, okay, line properties, so the piece of paper right below the bucket, Line property. See, right now it was going to do a, a zigzag, but I want, and I am on step 65, and I'm going to collect, select candle wicking, which I am calling bunny tails for this project, and purple, just because I haven't used that color yet, and I like to do every step in a different color. OK. Line bucket. So, see, you can see the purple and the candle wicking. So line bucket and turn that blue line to purple. And then next, this is where we t tell it what size. I know Steve would say make it even bigger than I decided a quarter inch. So I have it in inches and I'm going to go up to 0.25 and I think I can't make it exactly 2.5. It's going to go up to 0.252, so that's good. So OK, and you'll watch it change right there. OK, then spacing. OK, so here's your spacing. Now remember, I'm covering up a raw edge. So I want to bring these closer together. So it's at 0 0.040, and I just kind of decided 0 0.016. So I'm just bringing it closer together. Um, I could make them touch, but I just thought just to have a teeny tiny little space in between them, maybe we'll make them look more like bunny tails. So, okay. Now, what does everybody think? Do they think I should go even bigger than 252? I'm, think, I'm thinking, I'm hearing Steve yelling at me and saying, make it bigger, make it bigger. So, I think I will. So, okay, let's just take a look at it. So, here's, I'm at 252. 
Maybe I'll just go up to, oh, I don't know. I'm always afraid. I'll go 280 just for Steve. Okay, so okay. And there, so 280, I think that's good. It's, it's in between a quarter inch and three eighths. Okay, so I'm good. So you decide how big you want them. Then set, okay. Now, every one of these is going to be different. So you really don't have to memorize it. But, uh, you know, just in case I press the wrong button, I would like to memorize it. So we're going to go memory, save on the machine. Now, I don't have that in the steps. So, but our next step is to press embroidery. So I do have four steps here. I can see the tack down for the blue fabric. I can see the satin stitch for the blue. I can see the ta uh, tack down for the peach fabric and then the bunny tails. Okay, so I think I'm good, right? I don't, I don't think I've forgotten anything. All right, so the first thing that I am gonna do, and I wanna do a tack down, and let me see what color I have in. I don't have any in, and my required uh, felt pad isn't there. I'm gonna take my chances, but it's not good. We brought this up from downstairs and they don't have a felt pad. I'm just gonna go ahead with it. I, now see, if I, if I start out with blue on blue, it, it's gonna be hard to see my stitching. So I think I should go with, oh, like I'm thinking maybe a gray. I'm gonna open my drawer here and see what I have. Oh, I can go, here's, here's like a turquoise. I think that'll work. Okay. So, okay, and the other thing I don't have 